Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to video number five in the restoration series for this um, Philips 461A 1937 radio. I have finally completed it. In this video, I'll show you the finishing touches. There were a few things to do. There's an alignment of the dial. There's an alignment or um, yeah, tuning of the front end, which gets done as well with a DIY tool. I always like playing with those things and um, a test. And uh, I am now really a happy guy because this is the oldest radio I've done and it's come out fantastically, fantastically. I am really happy and it's a Philips. So um, if you've done these things, you know what that means. There's a lot of reason for joy when you get a Philips working well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so we've come to the, the interesting bits as if the rest to date has not been. It has been, it's been uh, quite dramatic for me. But uh, now we're doing uh, some of the RF alignment at the front end. Now we need to make sure that the front end circuits are properly aligned and there are three things we need to do. One, we need to make sure that the oscillator is tracking correctly with the, the, the position on the dial. We need to make sure that um, the RF band filter at the front end is actually allowing through the bands that we want. In other words, when we tune to say one megahertz, we want to know that one megahertz is coming through. And then the last thing is the antenna circuit. We need to make sure that the signal coming in, let's say we've tuned to one megahertz, is actually the one megahertz signal. So what we normally do is we set a position on the dial and we send a frequency and we adjust the oscillator to that frequency. Now, this is different. <laughs> it had to be different. It's a Phillips, come on. They don't tell you to put the dial in because you've got to put this whole thing into the radio to get the dial to be able to see where you're tuning to. They tell you to turn this 15 degrees and apparently they've got a little gadget that they put on here, which is exactly 15 degrees. And following an example given by Don's Radio Shed, I've got a similar gadget. This is my gadget. So what have I done? I've made a line down the middle. You can, I think you can sort of see it there. It's in pencil. That is perfectly vertical using the set square and they tell you to turn it 15 degrees. Now when you turn it 15 degrees, that should be at the 200 meter range. There's a little discrepancy that say 200 meters and then you're supposed to send 1442 kilohertz, which is not quite right, but we are doing approximates here because this thing is by no means a uh, digital device. So what I did is I drew this to the center. There's the line down there. And then I cut this piece of paper 15 degrees and now when I tune, I look for the line. There's the line appearing there, 15 degrees. So it should be somewhere there. This is our medium wave. I'm supposed to send 1442 kilohertz and we're supposed to hear it on there. If we don't hear it on there, we're supposed to adjust C12, that bottom one. Where are we? We are here. Select medium wave and then put the 15 degree latch, whatever you want to call it and turn the condenser, they even show you what this thing looks like, turn the condenser to the, to the stop so it's rotated 15 degrees and then send a weak uh, modulated signal at 1442 kilocycles per second to the antenna via the proper antenna capacitor. Okay, I've got a dummy antenna on that um, on the uh, switch attenuator so I can put it to antenna and then you adjust C12, C7, C8 for maximum output. Now what are these guys? We look at C12 is over here on the oscillator circuit. So that is to make sure that it's tracking properly on the dial at the right position. And if we find it more or less there, we know we're okay. So we may not have to adjust this one. Then they say C7 and C8. There's C8 and there is C7. I saw C7 a little while ago. There we go, that's C7. So these are both trimmers. Now, what kind of trimmers are they? Well, fortunately, they're not the same as the ones that I had to deal with before. We can actually see here, they're C7, C8, C12. They're actually inside that, um, the coil former. It's, it's very similar to some of the more recent uh, capacitors, the trimmer capacitors. Not the same as the one I put in there, but the other Philips ones. The one thing I did want to find out, I know that C7 and C8 go to, to ground. And I can check that. There's C8, it goes to ground. There is C7, and it goes to ground. Now, what I need to make sure of, because I don't want to get, I don't want to interfere with this, I want to make sure that the cap sticking out the, the top is the ground end, because remember, this thing's got two sides. 
One of them is not ground, the other one's ground. I believe it's the ground then, and it's very easy to check. I can do that in a second. C12 is not connected to ground, and fortunately, I don't think I'm going to have to adjust that. You see, this, this doesn't go to ground, but these guys certainly will. And the reason is that I don't want to stick anything metal. You know, this is one of those um, uh, hex uh, nuts that you have to adjust, and I don't want to send something in there that's going to zap me. Now, what I'm going to use is this. I've got a hex, what is it, a nut? I don't know what you call these bloody things. And I've got a chopstick and I've got that stuck in there. That sort of comes out, but it fits in quite nicely there. And it's a 90 degree thing with the chopstick stuck on. So I can put this in there and adjust it. That's exactly what I need to do. Nevertheless, I don't want to send a metal piece of um, tool, a tool into that C12 at the bottom because I don't know, it's not high voltage, but I don't want to risk it. It might have some voltage on there, and fortunately it's the oscillator, so I may not have to adjust that at all. Okay, so what else do we need to do? Once we've done that, we've done that, we've gone and seen that, we've seen that, we are here. Re repeat, so you've got to sort of adjust it a few times, and then you select long wave, and you send 414 kilohertz, also at that 15 degree turn that we've got on there and you send 414 kilocycles per second, and you adjust C9. Now this is the problem, C9, 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 C9 is that bugger over there. It's another one of those twisties, and you know what? If it's fairly close, I'm not gonna change it at all, because it's basically just to fix the, um, the tuning approximately on the dial. What do they tell you to do after that? Um, then they tell you, MF quartz like thing. This is the MF, this is the IF trap. So you set it on long wave and you set this to approximately 2000 meters and you, or you, you tune to approximately 2000 meters and on a, what is that? Krachtig is strong. I think it's strong modulated signal at 128 uh, to the antenna and you adjust C37 for a minimum output. Now, what are we doing here? Well. We're actually just creating the IF trap. C37 is over there, the antenna comes in. This means that that capacitor, in parallel with that capacitor, you're supposed to sort of suck in all the 128s, all the IF frequencies, so they don't go back out of the antenna or they don't come in from another source nearby. I think it's all pretty clear and it's pretty simple. Then they just tell you to, once you've um, done all that, you're going to put this in the case. You have the, I'll show you the case in a minute and I'll show you how you adjust the pointer which is interesting, I had to build a pointer, this thing had no pointer, but uh, you put it on medium wave, you tune to 812, 810 kilohertz, and you look at the dial and you adjust the pointer to the position where, which corresponds to 810 kilohertz, and you, you know, tie it in, you sort of, you screw in the, um, the pointer onto that wire uh, dial cord, and that's at approximately 300, 370 meters, actually it's exactly 370 meters. And that's it. That's that alignment. Let's get going. I'll show you the details. Here we go again. 1442 kilohertz. Amplitude is at minimum. Modulated. Depth of 40%. Let's make it 30. It's 400 hertz. Send it. Going into the uh, switch attenuator. Dummy antenna on. Coming out of here and going straight into the antenna socket at the back there. Now with this masterpiece of geometry, I've got this thing all the way to the left. That line is perfectly aligned on there. I'm going to put the volume up and I'm going to start turning. There it is. It's not at 15 degrees, but hang on. Just a little bit more. And you know what? Not enough for me to worry about it because I don't want to mess with that capacitor down there. So we have tuned there to 200 meters or 1442 kilohertz. And now we have to look at the uh, meter and um, adjust those two coils at the top the antenna and the, um, what is it, RF filter, to a peak. 
that should be quite easy. Okay folks, now I can't do this without audio, so we're going to have some noise and we can see that on the uh, AC voltmeter. Now let me try and do this without another zap. Can I get this in there? Okay, it's in there. Oh, wrong way. Oh, nice. Whoa. That's going so high, I'm going to have to reduce the amplitude here. Give it like what is it? 12 dBs. Make sure it's still tuned in. A bit more volume. Okay, let's try again. There's our peak. See that? That's a peak. Now let's go to this guy. I'm not sure which one is the RF and which is the antenna. Well, that's a peak there. Let's go back here. That was a nice change. That's done. Folks, that is done. One more step to do. Put it on long wave. It's on long wave. I'm going to change this to, what is it, 414 kilohertz. Leave everything else the same. Put the volume up. It's not quite there. Just a little bit off. You know what? It's not much, and I'm not going to mess with that little uh, twiggly capacitor, and I don't have another trimmer to change in there, and it really makes very, very little difference. I think we've done it. I think we've done all the RF alignment that I'm going to do. I'm also not going to mess with the um, IF trap, because that's also one of those twirlies. So as regards alignment, outside of the uh, chassis, this one is done. Brilliant. So we've got our chassis finished, but that's only half the job, isn't it? We've got to get the cabinet ready. And here she is. This lady has now got the body fixed up as well. If you recall, I mentioned that um, the condition was actually very, very good originally. The Bakelite was, or should I say the Philite, was in perfect condition, just needed some polishing. And I've got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed with the result. That grill cloth was looking a little bit shabby, but this was just done with uh, shaving foam in the shower. I literally took the whole panel out, put it in the shower, rub it with, with shaving foam, and then leave it for a while, and then just rinse it off. This is the result. When you look at the back, you start wondering whether yellow was not a, well, a contagious color for this set. We already had the wires all in yellow, now we've got those side panels. What the heck is going on here? I needed to create a shield on there, the others were completely kaput. So I got a uh, envelope, an old envelope, it's sort of thickish paper, not quite cardboard. Taped a layer of uh, aluminium foil on the inside and connected that to that uh, bottom end there where the little wire sticks out. That's going to be connected to the uh, chassis. That's our ground, that's our shield. And of course the other side is the same thing. Now all the hardware inside here got de-rusted, cleaned, lubricated, all the stuff you need to do to make sure that it works perfectly well. That front plate, the um, hardware holding that was all cleaned up as well. The faceplate itself was in pretty good condition. The problem was actually the uh, dial pointer. The dial pointer didn't exist. This thing had broken off here. I got a thickish piece of copper wire, very straight, soldered it on there. It does solder. I was able then to just coat it, uh, or rather cover it, with heat shrink, red heat shrink. And I made that little felt bumper at the top here. 
so it doesn't scratch the back plate when it uh, slides along. This of course has got the other uh, diffuser, the light diffuser that still has to go on here. But my greatest concern is actually now got to do with the uh, with that indicator. You've got to fit that metal, that steel wire, which becomes the uh, indicator cord. And you fit it through the pulleys and you put it to the end here. And the end here is interesting because it's actually loose. So you fit it like that and then you can push it in and tighten it, which does make it easier, a little bit easier. If uh, Don's experience is anything, anything to go by, I should have some fun with that. But I'm going to try that next. There's nothing too magical about uh, this part of the work. It's just a little bit tedious. You've got to make sure that everything is clean and, uh, and fits well and works well, you know, and lubricate what you need to lubricate, like that rod. That's basically it. A little bit of attention to detail. Just take it slow and, um, and do a great job. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Now, everything we're going to do has got to do with this bugger here. And I came up with a bit of a problem. I've got these drawings, which I mentioned earlier. We'll see them on the screen. They're easier. And I tried to figure out how to do it by these drawings, and I found that there was a problem. This plate, or this... Um, damn, what do you call this thing? This thing does not correspond to the one I have in the drawings. You see, the one I have in the drawings is this one here. And um, it shows you how to do the, the top one. You know, in other words, the, the localized, the condenser tuning one, which is fine because there's a little clamp over there opposite these two guys. So you sort of figure out which one is correct. And then this one here, there's B, there's A, so it's this one here. They tell you to go back to some hook over here, which looks like it should be sort of between these two guys. Now, when I look over here, between these two guys, I got no hook, okay? No hook at all. So I had to do some digging. And also on the drawing, this thing's not shown at all. So I did some digging and I found another model of this unit, which is the 4661U. And this looks more like it. You see, I've got that hook over here, this one here, which is for, uh, uh, there's that, uh, that turnstile there, whatever you want to call it. And that goes to the bottom one, right? That's what I did. And then this one here for the, um, for the pointer, for the indicator, there's this rod or whatever they, they're trying to show us here. And that's what I've got here. So I'm going to do it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook these two ends over there. Go, this thing comes from here, along here, and it goes out, 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 and goes to the top. You forget about that for now, because you can tighten that later. It goes across the end there, back there, around here, and then it comes around here, 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 that way, and back to the hook up there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both ends, I'm going to hook them there, I'm going to put it through, put that one through, for example, bring it around here, and tape it there. Then I'm going to bring that one through, hook it, bring it around here, and tape it there. And then hopefully I'll be able to play with chopsticks as, um, as Don suggested. He says use some chopsticks and it uh, tends to work. So I'll try that. <laughs> we'll see how it works. Let's see. Perfect. I've got the two wound in there. I've got press stick holding both the one coming from there and the one coming from here. This is all the way to the left counterclockwise and I've got these going over the top. So we'll just have to see how it goes when I try and put this in the cabinet. I've got to remove the knobs. There's the four knobs and um, I'm ready to try putting it in. See how we get along. If you're expecting a dramatic put together, uh, I'm going to disappoint you. In fact, this thing was as, as anticlimactic as it can get. And the reason is it all worked out pretty well. I put the uh, string on, or rather the wire on, and I held it together with press stick as usual, which was a pretty good idea again. And when I put this in, I was able to fold it through the top, thread it through the top, bring it to the other side, and then tighten it. There was nothing dramatic about it. And as usual, it's easy when you've seen someone do it. So Don, thanks very much. I took your advice. 
I used uh, some chopsticks and it worked. Brilliant, so that's on. The wire, the top piece of the wire gets pinched in behind that washer and you tighten it down and that holds the point in place. All we need to do now is to align it, which we'll do next. And of course we can't forget to solder the ground wires, the ground from the uh, shields in place on both sides. So that's also done. And she's back in the cabinet. Looking good. I put the knobs back just the way I took them out, which is uh, in the case of the side ones, there's a little hole there. And you, you put a screwdriver through and you tighten the screw. In the case of the front ones, you have to go on, on the underside. So no problems there. Okay, what else do we need to do? We need to align it, but let me show you what this looks like from the front. She's looking quite jazzy. Nice. What a beautiful old lady. 85 years old. And she's had a facelift. I like it. The overall effect is exactly what I'd hoped for. There are no dings, no broken pieces. Pardon the glare there, but this piece is perfect. I've put in the dial indicator over there, or rather the station indicator, which was uh, not there at all, but it now works. The dial glass is cleaned up beautifully. The dial pointer, as you can see, is in place. This glare doesn't help much, but... So she's ready for the alignment and a final test. When I say alignment, I mean the pointer alignment. We start by setting the signal generator to 810 kilohertz, lowest amplitude possible, modulation on, it's going to go through the uh, switcher, but I'll switch on the dummy antenna and we'll take it from here and into the antenna socket. Now we'll see where we can find it. It's on medium wave. Whoa, that's close. There's 370. It is just a millimeter off. That's pretty close. So I need to move just a millimeter to the left. Let me try and do this without killing myself. That should do it. Let's have a look. It is exactly on 370 now. That's perfectly aligned. Brilliant. Alberto Garzón ha esquivado el tema de los aplausos, pero sí se ha mojado sobre la figura de Zelensky. Garzón reconoce la dura situación que le ha tocado afrontar, pero también ha aprovechado para lanzar un dardo al presidente de Ucrania por ilegalizar... También ha mencionado a la patronal de bienes de until she won the bloody thing. 
So we say all hail H. البارحة دعمت الوكالة احتفالية رمزية عبارة عن إضاءة فانو les normes d'accès au marché chinois. Comme étant l'emblème majeur de la coopération sino-africaine dans le cadre de l'initiative de la ceinture et la... are done this project is completed and I'm actually pretty chuffed with myself I really am chuffed with myself this is the oldest radio I've restored and it worked out pretty well with all the quirks that uh, Phillips throws at you I'm glad to have gone through this so if you've enjoyed this click like share subscribe and all that jazz and uh, if you want to support the channel directly please do so on patreon thanks for watching bye for now and stay safe